Well, we just uh, wrapped up a, a rather well attended event, uh, what one of many I've been told about uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It seems to me, coming from Denmark, that what she has got going here in Queens and Bronx is not just the average campaign, it seems almost like a movement. How do you see it? Do you follow her every day? Yeah, this is definitely a movement, and Alexandria has been talking about this since the beginning. Even when we were out there connecting petition signatures and try, just trying to get on the ballot, everything that we were organizing and doing was about, it wasn't one person getting on the ballot, it wasn't one person being elected, it was the idea of the people's voice being heard and them getting to actually elect their representatives as opposed to having the 1% select them. You know Alexandria better than uh, most of us uh, do. What is the right words to characterize her? You know what? She is an organizer, she's an activist, and she's a leader. Like, this is one of the things that... Look, I'm older than her. I'm significantly older than her. And I will tell you that I learn from her every single day and that she is somebody who has had an incredible amount of courage to stand up in a district when if you went and you talked to anybody in this district before and they're like, oh my God, you're gonna run against the chair of the Queen's Democratic Party, the fourth most powerful Democrat in the US, the money guy, no way. You don't do that, right? And she was like, but we should be able to elect who our representative is. And that means that we should be primarying who they are. You know, like, if you think he does a great job, vote for him. And that's where she was. She wasn't attacking on a personal level. She was just talking about the issues and the issues that are important to our community and the issues that needed a voice. And she is incredible at being that voice. I know that she really thinks about what she's putting out there and what she's presenting for people and leading them to. She's a remarkable, remarkable woman who I look at every single day and go, I don't know how she's doing this, but I'm glad she is. And I do whatever I can to support those efforts. It's no secret that she's greatly inspired by a lot of the things that we are doing in Denmark, such as free health care for everybody, free education for everybody, a progressive climate and uh, environmental policy and so on. Try to explain your American, and she is too. What is it uh, from my little country that you'd like to bring, and why is it that you wanted to bring it to here? Well, the other thing is both she and I are Puerto Rican. So though we might have lived in the U.S. continent for a long time, we come from, like where, I will say for myself, where my soul lives is on the island of Borinquen. And it is an island that definitely feels the impact of climate change, that has felt the impact, significant impact of us moving away from actually collectively supporting and helping each other. And I think that that was definitely a banner for us in terms of just having that sense and seeing it. And so um, when I can, on this I cannot speak about for Alexandria directly, but for myself, I was an army brat, and so I lived in Germany, I lived in Japan, um, I did a year of school in Switzerland, and I just got to see a bit more of how the world functioned. I have a really good friend who, um, in college, she was a Republican and was not necessarily for these things, and then she lived in Spain for two and a half years, and she came back an ardent, universal health care is where it, we need to start and there's so much more that we need to be doing. So I think it's just a factor of looking at, looking at our own world and seeing it's, maybe it's not working, and then looking out and looking at other places to go, okay, where do you have the best scores on people feeling comfortable or ha leading lives that at least are with dignity? And looking at what are the things that bring that to those places and how can we advocate for that here? Most likely she is elected uh, here in November for, uh, for the House of Representatives and will thereby be the youngest congresswoman ever in U.S. history. That, of course, itself is a remarkable change. But you know her. What kind of change besides from that is she going to bring to Washington? I think the, one of the things that there, and I don't know if this is a change because I honestly, um, maybe I just, I don't know well enough how Washington functions on this level. But one of the things that I can definitely comment about Alexandria is she looks for how do you bring people together? How do you get folks to work together on a solution? And I definitely think that with the amount of notice and um, 
attention and focus, that she will have the opportunity to bring up issues that have been bubbling within the community for a long time and bring those up in a way that folks that maybe have not had the chance to be as much out with the public just based on how our political system has worked, she's going to have a chance to bring that to the floor directly. Well, thank you for taking time. Thank you. Thank you, Adam.